Hello. Um, I want to show you something called the randomization test, which is a way of doing a, um, a hypothesis test if you want to compare the difference between two means. Um, it's a bit like the um, t-test, except there's almost no mathematics. It's blindingly obvious how it works, and the assumptions are quite a lot simpler, and in a sense, it's more rigorous. So it's very useful, very powerful, so needless to say, it is rarely used which is a pity. Anyway, so what have we got here? Um, the example I want to use is here. We've got um, 10 exam marks, um, 5 from females and 5 from males. Um, if you wanted to know um, who does best in this exam, males, males or females, the obvious thing to do is to work out the average of the female marks. So if you work out the average of those, that comes to 53.2. Similarly, the male average comes to 58.8. So the males are comfortably more. And if you work out the difference, female minus male, it comes to minus 5.6. Um, plus 5.6, of course, would mean the females are getting more. OK, so this seems to show that males do better than females in this exam. But the sample is only um, 10. Can you be sure that the same thing would happen if you had um, a bigger sample or if you were considering the whole group of um, students? So this is the question that null hypothesis tests are designed to cope with. Namely, um, if you've got a difference or some sort of relationship, how can you be sure that that represents a real difference which applies to the population in general rather than just an, a chance effect of the particular sample you happen to have? So how do we go about it? Well, if the, the key thing is to be clear about what the, the chance hypothesis is, the so-called null hypothesis. This, in this case, is the idea that um, the mark somebody gets in this exam um, is not affected by their sex. Females and males get the same. So the obvious way to sort of investigate that is just to um, Imagine that each of those marks was on a card, shuffle the pack, um, deal out five for the males, five for the females, and that will give you an idea of the sort of thing that might happen if sex really makes no difference to marks. So if we do that lots of times, we get an indication of how much the marks between the two sexes will vary if there really isn't any difference. Well, how do we do this? Well, it's dead easy. You'll see that I've put some random numbers here. This is to help with the next worksheet, which is called a single resample. The word resample just means a sample taken from a sample. And um, what, I've d what I've got here is exactly the same list of marks there and the same five females, five males, etc. Um, there. Um, but this time, um, I haven't got the same data. What I've got is the shuffled data. And another name for the randomization test that I prefer is the shuffle test. So imagine you've got these cards, you shuffle them, and you deal five for the males, which is, the f oh, sorry. Back to the top, you, de you deal five for the males, which is the first five, sorry, five for the females, which is the first five, five for the males, which is the next five, and the female average turns out to be 54.4, the male average is 57.6, so the difference is 3.2. So that's fairly similar to the difference of five and a bit we got before, which sort of suggests that quite big differences can happen by chance. If you press F9, um, what that does is it forces the spreadsheet to recalculate so that you get a different shuffle. Unfortunately, the software I'm using um, has disabled F9, so I can't do that. But if I enter a number there, which will force the spreadsheet to, re to um, recalculate, you'll notice that the marks have shuffled. The um, female average now is 57.8, 56.8. The male is um, 55.2. So now the females are doing better. Let's try another. Um, shuffle and remember if you've got this um, spreadsheet on your own computer you can just press F9 for this. The next reshuffle, which oh, norm the males now are doing far better, um, 18 better. Try again 
um, this time it's almost exactly the same and so on. So the idea is you just do lots of reshuffles and the obvious thing for me to do next is to show you what happened if you get lots of resamples and this is the answer. So we've got here actually 200 resamples. The difference for the first one is minus 1, for the second one is plus 8, for the next one is um, minus 8. And you'll notice if you look carefully that I've put a minus in the cell there. That indicates that the difference is bigger negatively than the actual difference, which I think was um, um, 5 point. Let's have a look. The actual difference is minus 5.6. The, um, the difference we've got here is minus 8. In other words, that is greater negatively speaking, so I put a minus. The next one is more than plus 5.6, so I put a plus. The next one, 2.4, is in the middle, and so on. So, um, the spreadsheet just does this, I think it's 200 times, and then in this, um, in this diagram here, I've plotted um, a little histogram, so the first bar here shows you the number that are um, a little bit less than 20. This bar there, that will include, for instance, um, the minus 18 we saw just then, um, and so on. So this, the histogram, the bars there, show you the um, pattern of the resamples. And the solid line there is the actual data, minus 5.6, and that's the sort of mirror image, plus 5.6. So what this shows is that lots of the resamples, in other words, the ones there, and there um, actually have a bigger difference between males and females than the actual difference we found of 5.6, which suggests, of course, that this the difference of 5.6 could easily be a matter of chance. Um, the spreadsheet works them out. In fact, the difference above or equal to 5.6 is 185 percent below or equal to is 25%. So the total probability in so that tail, as it's called, and that tail comes to, um, where are we? It's gone. Seem to have managed to delete it. Yes, comes to 43.5%. Um, That's the total probability. And that is the so-called p-value. Namely, it's the it's the probability of getting results more extreme than the actual results you've got. In other words, in this case, with a difference between the male and female um, averages, if, and that's important, if there really is no difference between males and females. In this case, it comes to 43.5%. In other words, it's quite likely, you know, this sort, this, sort, this sort of result is quite likely to happen. If the sample was much larger, or the difference was much more extreme, or the pattern was different in some way, um, in, in another example, you could well find that, the, um, that this probability is a lot lower. If that probability is a lot lower, that would mean that the probability of... Um, Results like the ones you've got occurring by chance is very small, and that would indicate that you've got, um, that there's real evidence that there is a difference. But the conclusion from this is that the difference between the male and female marks is well within the range that would be expected from chance. So P, to use the jargon, the two-tailed p-value is 43.5%, and the result is quite definitely statistically not significant.